Welcome to Empathy in Action. My name is Lynn Azarki, director of the Kids Bridge Youth Center and author of The Empathy Advantage. Special, special treat for you today. We're gonna to be listening to children, fourth graders from Kilmer, Joyce Kilmer School in Trenton, a fourth grade class inspired to be upstanders and they're gonna share their upstander projects with you today. We are starting with their teacher who inspires us all, Ms. Carly Bella, fourth grade teacher. And also, you'll find out if you listen to the end that these kids had a Kids Bridge experience. So, welcome, Ms. Bella, and your retinue of fourth grade upstanders. Can you tell us, first of all, what school you're from, and then what inspired you to create this project for your fourth graders? Hi, I'm from Joyce Kilmer School in Trenton, New Jersey. And every day I am so fortunate to spend my hours with smart, intelligent, brave, kind, and inspirational students. And so what I see every day is these moments of greatness that I know if we just listen to children more, the world would be a more incredible place and we'd realize our potential. So for me, something that's very important is student agency. I want my students to know that they have the power to change things that aren't fair, that aren't kind, that can be better. And if we plant those seeds now, then I know that the difference will continue and it'll spread and make the world a more beautiful place. Thank you so much for that. So it really is a challenge to, to inspire kids that one person can make a difference. So let's start with Jake and ask Jake in his own words, what what inspired him? What makes him think he can make a difference? Okay. Well, I can make a difference because I know my voice could be bigger. If I make it smaller, I could start smaller and then make it bigger. Okay, great response. And let's go to Jamal. Jamal, why do you think you can make a difference? I think I can make a difference because when I use my voice, I can change the world. Just the world. Okay. That's wonderful. All right. So we're going to, we have five upstanders there and we're going to ask each one to talk about, you, you each wrote letters to make a difference. What is your topic? You wrote a letter about what and why was that important to you? So let's start with La Desk. I wrote the letter to the mayor about like the littering that's going on in Trenton. Wow, you wrote a, a letter to the mayor of Trenton. What did you ask the mayor to do? I asked him if he could like add more posters up to stop littering. To stop littering. And why does littering bother you? Because trash isn't good for the environment. And if you think you had clean streets to, to walk on, would that make your community and your neighborhood a better place? Yes. That's wonderful. Thank you for being caring about our community. That's wonderful. Hello, Mayor. I am Ledes. I'm in the fourth grade, and I will be talking about littering in Trenton. I think it's an important topic because it's not good for the earth nor the oceans. I. It's not a good feeling when people come to visit Trenton and all they see is things like soda cans and plastic bottles. Second, you don't see much, ve you don't see very many outdoor trash cans and that might cause people to litter. Either way, it's not good to litter. Excellent, I think the mayor, well, the mayor already responded to you and I can see why. So Joasin, share with us, what was your project about? What was your letter about and what was your intent? Well, my letter was about immigrants and why I did it was because my family is immigrants. Your family are immigrants, where are they from? Haiti. Haiti, wow. And who did you write the letter to? Um, Joe Biden. President Joe Biden, you wrote a letter to the President of the United States. That's exciting. Good for you. You didn't hear back yet? Yeah, I haven't heard back All yet. All right, hopefully you will. All right, thank you for sharing that. I think that we should help immigrants so that way they can have better lives in the United States and have more ch chances for greatness. 
Imagine you're at an airport. You decided to help an immigrant. After that, they tell you that they really need help. Then you feel as warm as the sun. We need to help more immigrants around the world so they can have better lives so that they can be people of this country instead of being an immigrant. My first reason is because then there will be less poverty in the world and less homeless. For greatness, well done, wonderful. Okay, let's go to Janaya. Janaya also wrote a letter to the president. Janaya, are you there? Yeah. Okay, tell us what you wrote your letter about. I wrote a letter about making things less expensive to help people. Less expensive. So are you noticing the price of groceries and, and such going up? Yes. And is that challenging to families in Trenton and around the world? Yes. And you wrote that letter that concerns you. So that's a wonderful thing you did. Thank you. My second reason why things should be less expensive is that some people can't afford to stuff expensive like for food for example what if a person walks into a store with a few dollars gets stuff that they really need and goes to the cash register and doesn't have enough money so they have to go to bed hungry but if things were less expensive then that person would be able to get their food and go bed full if things were less expensive then people who can't afford food can still get food you'll be a lifesaver wow well articulated very sad prices are going up and some people are going without certain foods. So thank you for sharing that. So next we have Jake. And Jake also wrote a letter to the president. Jake, tell us what your letter was about. My letter was about, um, about homeless people uh, getting homes in the USA, like, like the whole United States people everywhere, Florida, California, everywhere. Do we have homeless people in Trenton? Jake? Yes. Yes, we do. And we know there's organizations that help, but there's more that we need to do. Things are expensive and housing and rentals are expensive. So thanks for that. The last reason homeless people need all these things is that they need clothes for their comfort and all for the weather. And they need to be safe because of rain, the rain. So the next example is 553,742 people are homeless, and that's a lot, lot of people. And they need more space and places because there's a lot of homeless in the United States. Wow, and you did some research, wonderful letter. So let's now switch to impact. So you write letters, let's see if there was any impact. Let's start with Ladess. Ladess, did you, I heard back. Did you hear back um, from anybody? Yes, I heard back from the mayor and he agrees. We're hoping to have a class cleanup soon. The mayor wrote you back? That's so exciting, a very busy mayor. So you had an immediate re reaction to your letter. How wonderful. And that, that's uh, hopefully more will be done to get that litter off the streets and clean up the community. Janaya, did you hear back from the president on your quest? Not yet, but I'm really hoping soon. Okay, I know he has a staff that helps him answer the letter. So let's, we're hoping to hear from that too. Okay, um, let's ask uh, Joe Austin, um, how will you continue after this letter? How will you continue to use your voice to make a difference? If I'm able to maybe like protest or put up signs about it. Okay, protesting. So have you ever been to a protest? No. Or a march? Yet. Okay, so that's something to look forward to. That's a great thing for kids to do. I know there's marches and on this on the city steps of Trenton, people make their their advocacy known and their causes known. So that might be you on the Trenton steps one day. Okay, so let's switch to upstanders. So as you guys know from your teacher, Miss Bella, upstanders are kids and adults who stand up and speak out for what they're passionate about. So let's start with Jamel. What does it mean to be an upstander? Um, I think it means to be an upstander when uh, you help people that are in need and, and share. Wonderful, what a beautiful answer. Okay, so let's uh, discuss upstanders a little bit more. Um, Jamel, 
Um, how are you an upstander in your school? I share my snacks and I make friends with the people who feel down sometimes. So you're sharing snacks and food with others. Do you perceive, are you trading or you just give things away because you perceive people are hungry? Just give things away. Very sweet. That's a wonderful way to be an upstander. Jake, how do you, how do you express your upstanderness to your peers or your friends? Jake? Becoming good friends with kids who are sad and always trying to be helpful. And I'm always trying to be helpful. Wow. How do you perceive that kids are sad? Are they in the lunchroom or on the bus? Well, or... If somebody bullies them, then 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 I'll just cheer them up because, because I know what it feels to be sad and get bullied. So you're walking in the shoes of somebody who is bullied. And let me tell you, Jake, being a friend to somebody who has a target is the most powerful thing you can do. So you're very smart that you know that and that you have empathy for these people. Very nice. Okay, Ladess, what do you do to be an upstander? Um, I cheer up people who are sad and let my teacher know when things aren't right. So I love that. You're walking in the shoes of a sad person and you're very smart to share with a trusted adult. Sometimes we have sad people, people are picked on, people are bullied, but sometimes Ladess, there are safety issues, right? So you tell a parent, you tell a trusted adult, and that's wonderful that you do that. So that is definitely qualifies as an upstander. All right, Joasin, what do you do to be an upstander? Well, I try to stop arguments and help people. Wow, that sounds rather brave. You stop arguments? And what do you say to kids that are fighting? What, what kind of things would you say? Well, first I'll try to separate them and I'll be like, okay, guys, stop fighting. Wow, you physically separate people? And are there times you need to tell adults that kids are fighting? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, that's a good idea to tell adults because sometimes as fourth graders, you can't handle everything and it's good to go to a trusted adult. That's very impressive. Thank you, Joasin. Janaya, how are you an upstander? I care for people and make sure that everybody's okay. Very nice. Can you get share an example of something you did recently, caring for others? One time my friend was sad because she got into a fight with her other friend and I tried her, my best to cheer her up. That's very nice, very nice. Okay, you guys are upstanders. So I, we'd like you to inspire other kids who are listening today and other parents as well. So what advice do you have for the kids listening today that would encourage them to be an upstander? Let's start with Janaya, since you're here. Speak up and don't stay quiet. Speak up, so stand up and speak out. Okay, and as you practice that, that becomes e easier. So that's how you make a difference. Ladess, what advice do you have for other kids listening who feel they can't make a difference? What can- what, Write letters. Go ahead, what did you say? Write letters, you might hear back. Write letters. So how hard was it for you to write a letter? Was that hard or was that easy? It was kind of easy. Kind of easy. So you're only in fourth grade and you're telling adults and other people, this is an easy thing to do. I'm sure your teacher, Ms. Bella, helped you with that. So we can make a difference by writing letters. And then if you have your friends or your classmates write, write letters, that's even more powerful because I know there's a lot of kids here today who wrote letters that we haven't seen. All right, Jake, can you give us, for the listening people, how can other people make a difference? Stand up for people and don't let people bully. bully. Don't like people, Billy. Okay, so how um, you're, you're advising kids to don't let other people bully you. So if a bully comes at you in the hall, the lunchroom, what are you gonna tell that kid to do? Uh, speak up or stand up. Okay, how about walk away? Yeah, it could be another option. Okay, I mean, you don't have to stand there and take it, right? And then how about if it keeps going on, you're gonna tell who? uh an adult 
an adult, adult who can take action. Okay, very good. All right, Joasin, how can you speak to the people? How can we get more people to write letters and be upstanders? Well, I'll say start small and see if things aren't right. Start small. So like one little easy step and then build from there? Yeah. Okay, very good. And it helps to have more than one person advocate for a cause. So you wrote a letter to President Biden. You haven't heard yet, but hopefully you'll hear soon. It's exciting to write a letter to the president. All right, Jamel. Do you have any advice for the potential upstanders out there? Don't be afraid to speak. Don't be afraid. Okay, so Jamel, how did you summon the courage to speak up? Sometimes we're afraid to do that. How did you get to um, speak up? Uh, um, from my teacher, Miss Bella. Miss Bella is inspiring. I agree, she's very inspiring. So I have one more question for all of you. Did all of you kids participate in the Kids Bridge program? Did Kids Bridge zoom into your school this year? And can you, um, I guess I'll call on you one by one. I would like to know what you learned from Kids Bridge. Let's start with Janaya. The most important thing you learned from the Kids Bridge program? Is that not to bully and make sure people are okay. Very nice, thank you. Well said, I'm sorry yeah. for that. All right, let's move on to Jake. Oh, so, yeah, um, I think it was don't let people bully you. Joasin, anything you remember from the Kids Bridge program? We actually got a kit for it and basically I think the most important thing for you me got was- got a mindfulness kit, right? Did that help you breathe and calm down when you get upset or angry? Yeah. Right, the Kids Bridge calming kit. Jamel, can you talk about the Kids Bridge Common Kit? Uh, in the Common Kit, it was a, a tea bag, uh, a, uh, like a square thing with a shape on it, and you can trace your hand. And then it was this thing with little beads in it, so you shake it. Great. So is that in your desk, or did you take that home? I took it home. You took it home. All right. Are you using it at home? Yeah, because sometimes my brother gets on my nerves. Ooh, and you use it when your brother gets on your nerves, and does it help you calm down? Yes. Excellent. Okay, Miss Bella, can you reflect on the Kidsbridge program just for a minute, how you used it and how you it, it helped your uh, students? Absolutely. So I've had the opportunity to have Kidsbridge be both in my third grade classroom at Jefferson and now my fourth grade classroom at Kilmer. And it's a terrific way for students to hear from experts, an outside voice beyond their classroom teacher to really hone in on how they have strategies to let their light shine and to be calm and present. Um, it helps them on their kindness journey and making a difference for sure. And, and we were so delighted to be able to present this program to your school with your fabulous principal, Ms. Paula Bethea, who's been a partner with Kidsbridge for 12 or 13 years. So we thank you for that. So um, I would love to you to sort of sum up this, this experience that you were inspired to create an upstander project and for all the teachers and the parents listening out there in this community in these very challenging times for all of us, but particularly for kids with, with COVID and such, um, you, you have such a verve and a passion for teaching these young people to make a difference. Can you share and inspire others with, with what, everybody can do one thing, one little thing. Can you share with us what keeps you going and, and, and encourage and cheer other people on? Absolutely. What keeps me going are the children. They're incredible. And I hope to make a, you know, plant a little bit of a seed to help them realize what their true geniuses are. That's what I say to them. Each of these children, there's a reason that they are here and they have to find their passion and what makes their heart sing so that they can be the best versions of themselves and make a difference in this world. And so I think if we just stop as educators and listen to the children, 
they know the way, they know the answer, right? We're just putting them in the right direction and giving them the tools to use what already, what already makes them their own version of their genius. So I would just say it's the children, they're incredible. And Thank if we you. stop to listen to that and realize it, the world would be a better place. Amen. I, Amen. Yeah. And the other thing is we have to start earlier. So it's, I think mm -hmm. middle school and high school are too late that a child that we, I mean, I was listening to uniqueness and confidence and they're only in fourth grade and they're writing letters to the president. Oh my goodness. So we, we I think we need to start much earlier as you have. And I, I want to thank you for your devotion because um, surely there's more that we could do to make the world a better place. And I think we need to start earlier. And Kidsbridge is really committed and devoted to that. So thank you for what you do. And um, just a shout out to, you know, Ms. Bethea again as principal and the Trenton School District that Kidsbridge partners with so closely. We will be there again next year in September and October to start our programs again and partner with you. So thank you and thank you upstanders. You all did a great job and uh, Kidsbridge will be seeing you soon, I promise. Congratulations because you are winning the Kidsbridge Upstander, Youth Upstander Award. So, wow, are you inspired? I sure am. Listening to fourth graders who want to make a difference, who are upstanders and want to make the place, our place, our world, a wonderful place to live as they grow up. Fourth graders, we need to start younger. So shout out to Miss Carly Bella, inspiring a teacher, inspiring all these kids, the principal, Miss Paula Bethea in the Trenton School District for partnering with Kidsbridge. We will be regaling these children, these students soon at the Kidsbridge annual gala in October. Come and join us and come meet them. So thank you for visiting us and stay tuned for the next episode of Empathy in Action. Thanks. Bye-bye.